Hey folks, Machine Repeat here. I'm out on the road today. I'm in Monroe, Wisconsin, and I was over here doing some filming for Tractor Tales, of course, for our Machine Repeat TV show, and for US Farm Report. And I tell you what, we're gonna have a little fun today. Actually, we're gonna have a lot of fun, because this is an unbelievable collection here. Uh, the Bader family, and we'll hop into their little office slash museum here. And here we go, folks. We need to do some introductions. On the right, we have Troy Bader, Randy Bader, Brad Bader, and folks, if you've never met Mike Byers, this is the guy that does tractor tails for Machine Repeat and U.S. Farm Report. Mike, always great to see you, bud. Good to see you, Greg. Now, you told me about this uh, opportunity to come film over here, and boy, you weren't lying. This is uh, unbelievable. Yeah, neat place. A lot, of, a lot of really cool collections and, and a lot of history here. So, And you can see, folks, if you're, if you're, if you're into history over Mike's shoulder, you already know what's coming, but that is a very rare item up possibly one of seven uh, John Deere cutaway 4010 that we're gonna get up close to and talk. But guys, now I know you're super busy. It's a busy time of year. And thank you for your time for filming our Tractor Tail segments. They were fantastic. So watch for those on upcoming episodes, folks. But if you guys have a little time, I would love to do a little walk and talk. Sure. But before we get started, uh, guys, uh, we should point out, uh, guys, your late father, Ron Bader, legend in the agricultural industry, uh, on the agency side, and can you, and, and dad passed away, was it a, a couple years back? Or recently? 2018, okay. And dad was, how old was Pop? He was 80? 86, and he was a month from 87. 87. And just a little background on your dad, he, did he grow up on the farm? He grew up on a farm, he was born in Worms, Nebraska, mm. and uh, the Baders farmed out there, and uh, I believe he was six when his father got I think tired of the Nebraska weather okay. and uh, the locusts and things. And they moved to uh, Marion, Iowa. Hmm. And uh, dad graduated from uh, uh, Springville, Iowa. Okay. And uh, that's where they found. Okay. And then uh, your dad wound up in the 70s. He was in the uh, ag agency business? He did. Uh, dad loved agriculture. And when he was young and he was on the farm, I think he had a, a yearning to want to go to this big city. Okay. And see what was going on. Yeah. And he sure did. Well, and uh, created uh, the name of the agency, Bader. Bader Rudder and Associates. Bader Rudder and Associates, right? One of the the you know the keystones, legends in the egg industry, and uh, and guys. Now you're involved with farming, and folks probably know the the brothers here from your your pulling days. Uh, can you give us the, the background there? When did that get started? Oh, I guess we built our first tractor in uh, 1988. 88, okay, and you, you've been out at Louisville for years. and yeah. yeah, we've done all that. Okay, and you were kind of retired for a little while? Took a little hiatus, it just got a little too hectic with on my end of it just because my girls were showing horses and showing cattle and right. uh, something had to give and I knew that tractor would always be there when I came right. back. And the name of the of, of your guys' team, the, the tractor? Yeah, no Fear, the original is No Fear and then we have uh, No Fear Forever Green Edition, so we still wow. have them. Very cool. Soon to be seeing one again on yeah. the track. So oh, okay. Well, then we can confirm <laughs> possible comeback, folks. Keep an eye out for that. And, folks, let me just do a little pan around uh, the guy's office here in the museum. Uh, it's just incredible. So many stories. And, and, by the way, right as we come in the door here, Randy, you were telling me about this little baby, this little cat pedal tractor. Uh, did this thing come from local, or where did you get it? Well, I got real lucky. I'd, I'd only seen pictures of them and heard about them. Never thought I would see one. And uh, right uptown, there's a local uh, dealer. And I got word of it that he had a little Caterpillar pedal tractor. Yep. I headed right over there right away and I saw it and I brought it here to our museum. Yeah, once you see it, you can't hardly leave without buying it, right? I wish I knew more about it. I know it's very old and very rare. Well, it looks like it's been doing some good work too. Look at the blade up there. I mean, hey, this thing is... Well, I think those little fellows put it to the test wherever they were. And I, 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 guys, I can't remember if it was Troy or Randy or whoever we were talking. It's like the little dudes that were riding that thing. They had to, they had to work. I mean, it's not, <laughs> not all the amenities. They were strong there. boys, weren't they? Yes. And right next to it, a, a 19, early 60s, a 63 John Deere 110. Uh, now this, the 110, did that have some family significance? Uh, it, it does. Uh, our grandfather Bader, Arnold Bader, okay. which would have, uh, he was a very good dairy farmer out there in uh, Marion, Iowa. 
and uh, then he bought his first farm in Atkins, Iowa, and uh, he was very successful at a large dairy farm for okay. the time. Okay. All John Deere. Grandfather Bader was all John Deere, and we remember as boys sitting on his lap riding tractors. Sure. <clears throat> with my dad and my, my uncles. But uh, his health went down, and he had to uh, sell his cows, his Holstein herd, and uh, had, he leased out his farm, sold his machinery, but he went to work for the neighborhood dealership mm. that he had bought tractors from all of his life okay. as a salesman. Well, he sold one of the first clamshell uh, John Deere lawn tractors of the time mm. and sold it on a Friday night, told him that uh, he would deliver it on a Saturday morning, and I wished he wouldn't have gone that morning. It was foggy, and he was killed on the railroad tracks. Oh, wow. Uh, just south of his house. Mm. Wow. But, uh, so, yeah, we, we've got one in here. To remember Grandpa. Wow. That is cool. And now, right behind you, Randy, there we have uh, we have old Abe. Uh, of course, don't see these around. When we do, they're always fun to hear the story. And was this something you guys picked up, or your dad, or? Well, we were with Dad. Uh, actually, we were looking at a UDLX. And there was a couple of them up in uh, Michigan. Okay. Very large sale. Uh, the fellow that was selling out uh, was an executive with one of the big car dealerships. Mm. Had a tremendous collection. Mm. Hundreds of uh, tractors. But anyway, Dad spotted old Abe. And he told us guys, you know, I'm going to buy old Abe. But uh, so we headed up that way, had a real good day. Yeah. And ended up watching a UDLX bring $250,000. Yeah, I, I was gonna, we weren't going to have a UDLX anymore. <laughs> I was going to say, those UDLXs have just gone bonkers here the last four or five we, years. Well, you know, I remember when we were younger, and we could have bought one for twenty twenty five thousand, and at the time we just thought that was too much money. Right. <laughs> you have to laugh right now. I think all of us bringing that kind of money. All of us should get one rewind button. Yeah, yeah. And go know. back into that auction where we let it go by. Yeah, but uh, yes. crazy out time. Well, guys, now folks. We could head to the right, and yes, you can see an unbelievable Waterloo boy behind me. We're going to get to that. But guys, let's go to the left here, <clears throat> and as we start, uh, folks, this is so fun. There's just amazing variety of equipment here. Uh, can you tell us about the drill, guys? Yeah, it's, uh, well, that would have been a handful to walk behind. <laughs> yes. And we're ready to go to bed at the end of the night. Yes, But full day. Yeah, back when uh, you had 40-inch cornrows, I was told that uh, you'd go ahead and uh, plant your no-till in the rows behind your horse. I would imagine yeah. it was uh, probably wheat or some of the things that they were trying to crop. And so you guys, to pick up a piece like this and to, and to display it, um, I mean, what is an old drill like? I mean, a, or an old plow. And by the way, an unbelievable prairie queen up, up the steps here. I'm incredible, but these older implements uh, they have stories too, don't they? Oh, they all do. They're all, yeah, they, they all do. The people that, that counted on them, that would have been a very modern piece of machinery right? that really cut down on somebody's work and probably helped them to get a crop in earlier and be more successful. Right. Everything they did had a purpose. Yeah. Always pushing the envelope too, right? Just what farm... To or feed a lot of people. Right. Feed the world, yeah. Absolutely. Well, folks, now we we have to guys. We have to go look at the cutaway here. Uh, we actually did a feature on this for uh, so you guys follow along here because you got to tell us a story about it. But we just did a segment for Tractor Tales, so hop in here. This is a uh, again a forty ten cutaway. So deer, as they were making the next gen, uh, releasing them, of course, at the famous Dallas dealer meeting in what was that early sixty one or whatever it was. Nineteen sixty one. Yeah. So. Just tell us how you got this and uh, give us a story on it. Well, our family got lucky to have this tractor. And the only reason we got so lucky was uh, we get the Green Magazine here a little earlier than some of the others. Okay. And as soon as I got it, I usually go look and see what's for sale or, or that part of the book. And there it was, a 4010 cutaway. And I called the guy right away to see if it was available. I started to make a deal. Then I talked to uh, my brothers and dad, told them what I had found, and uh, they all liked the idea too. And so. Uh, and it was from Kentucky? Shelbyville, Kentucky. Okay. And he'd also, he had a, a couple of uh, John Deere dealerships down there, real wonderful guy. 
I proposed that the tractor would come to our family museum, and John Deere was trying to buy it at the time mm. for the first sale down at the pavilion. Oh, right. And uh, somehow I sweet-talked him, and he said, Randy, all I really want is some good pictures when you get it done. Well, that Randy, that's a tip of the cat to you cap to you then if you were able to out talk <laughs> deer to acquire this thing but this is amazing i know and i talked to young farmers of course and you you know john deere is such an amazing company now with their uh, market position and history and everything but i think the younger farmers folks maybe don't have a handle on that deer there was a pivot point coming out of the 50s coming off the two cylinders and that's really what you know this unit was to to take around to the dealerships to show local farmers to get them believe in this new next Absolutely. generation tractor. Yeah, it had a spot for a belt here, and when it would get to the dealership, uh, they would actually operate it with uh, electric motors. Yep. And that way they could show the farmers the brand new clutch. Yep. Uh, the brand new transmission and rear end. Uh, hydraulics, the new John Deere hydraulics, uh, were the finest, newest hydraulics in the world, uh, open mesh, uh, rollomatic front end. Yep. That was just one thing after another that made this tractor the best. So the and next... It won the tractor wars for them. Right. Next gen and then into the 20 series and then the rest is history for deer. Yes. But, yes. Uh, you know, no technology or computers to show a new tractor back in the day. This was cutting edge to have a cutaway like this. That's pretty cool. It was amazing that, that they did that much work. What kind of machinists and so on did that. And it was just a beautiful, lucky find. Now, us. it didn't look like quite this. I mean, because this looks like day one, incredible. When you got it out of Kentucky, it needed a little TLC? It needed a lot. You know, it had been hauled all over. It was dinged up a little bit. Uh, and at the time, uh, we did our our own work. We had a great painter working for us at the thing. Uh, Walt Lensicum mm. is his name. And it was kind of a labor of love when we got her home. She got in the shop and we just took her all the way down, every nut and bolt. Yeah. And uh, built our own sandblaster so that we could move right along. And we brought it all back into the perfect factory colors that the cutaways came with. Oh. And it's never been sat on. Never been sat on. And so here it is. And guys, what do you, when you have you've had folks over uh, over the years as this has been here, what, what have they, Brad, what have they, what's their reaction been? Oh, everybody just pretty much stares at it. Yeah. What, and and they say, what is it, I suppose? Yeah. And, you know, you just tell them how the John Deere used it to usher in the six-cylinder. Yep. And um, usually just end up standing here for five to ten minutes just looking yeah. at it. Yeah. That's quite a, quite a conversation piece. And, again, uh, Amazing. Well, and the fun folks is I uh, just pan around here. Again, you can see we have lots of fun stories to tell coming up. But now, Troy, you lead the way here because right around the corner, we were, uh, you guys were giving me a little tour. And I'm a big snowmobile fan. I grew up in the early 70s riding some John Deere sleds. And folks, this is so cool. I think on the left, we have a, is that a, One's a 300, one's a 600? Yeah, this is the 300 over here. Okay. And this is the six. And these things, Troy, hardly have any miles on. Yeah, you know, I'd have to even go back there and look, but you no, know, they're, they're under, I believe they're under 100 miles. Uh, yeah, they are. Was yeah. A, wow. A couple at bottom, Randy knows the story a little bit better about the couple, but I mean, to find an example of John Deere snowmobiles like this is pretty outstanding. It even came with the, uh, with all the gear. <laughs> I love the gear. A couple bought with it. We got a couple cases of oil, the trailer, the box, the uh, outfits came in. Wow. Helmets, boots, it's all here, you know, and it, it's, it's, it was quite a find and... Uh, uh, yeah, I know an auctioneer yeah, in Michigan who's gonna smile at this. He's a big sled guy, but uh, wow. And uh, Randy, where did you guys find these? These were in central Iowa, I believe. Okay. And uh, we ended up bidding against the Snowmobile Museum in Montana. Oh, wow. Uh, we were the two final bidders. But uh, even still has a break-in tag in here. Wow. Spare belt. It's got the, with all the label on it. And That's a little uh, snow time machine, isn't it? It is. Brad's oldest son, Cameron, found one on the Internet. 
and uh, told us about it. Yep. It said that, hey, I need a partner. And I said, well, you got some partners. <laughs> he did. He called his uncle. There when you I go. saw what it was, we went nuts. We couldn't believe it. Yeah. And oh, we had one of the kids. Dad bought us one. You, you grew up sledding on a John Deere? Yes. Sled? Nice. We had a bull with a John Deere. Okay. Nice mittens. Oh, <laughs> that's so good. Awesome. Yeah, that, that, this is just time machines, guys. That is so cool. Well, again, that was the, su the surprise here, folks. Like, turn the corner and see something like that. And again, we've got uh, vintage signs. So you guys really sort of have an eye for kind of a wide variety of, of machinery and uh, memorabilia, it, it seems like. Well, you know, when you start getting into it, everything becomes important. Yeah. And you see things that other people have got somewhere yeah. Well, they're, they're going to sell, and you'd like to have them at your own place. Right. You know, like that's a very rare sign up there. Yep. Very hard to find. Uh, and the stuff has really gotten expensive nowadays. Oh, it hasn't it? But uh, we're glad we did what we did while we were young. And folks, we, we go down a few steps here, and yes, it's a different color paint, and we'll, we'll get down and tell the, the story, the family story with the Alice Chalmers connection, but... Uh, what model have we got here, guys? A D19. Okay. Now, the history with your family, Randy, the Bader family with Alice Chalmers, your dad, your late father, Ron, with, the, with his uh, the business, the Egg Agency, Alice Chalmers was a big client of his, right? Oh, it was a, a very good client, big, great client of our father's, and uh, he loved them. Mm. And uh, when he made his split... Uh, from the company that he was working for, uh, Jim Rudder and himself decided to create their own company. Sure. Called Data Rudder and Associates. And Alice Chalmers went with Dad and Jim mm. and stayed with them. And uh, quite frankly, just a couple of months before Dad died, uh, we were riding around together and he said, you know, guys, there's really nothing in that museum that's, that's Alice Chalmers. And he said, Alice Chalmers made me. And he said, what if one of my friends would come? And I didn't have much Alice Chalmers stuff. <laughs> and so we all kind of laughed. And uh, there was a Mecham sale coming up. And uh, he was going, uh, he had some overseas trip that he was going on. So he asked us to go pick him out one. Okay. And uh, he started his business in 1974. Uh, so this tractor would have been a little bit different. But it was a very famous Alice Chalmers, hmm. uh, the first turbocharged tractor, and so yeah. it was a beautiful tractor. And Dad was really happy when we brought it back and showed it to him. I bet Pop was smiling. Yeah, the first turbocharged tractor, there, a '63 model D19 diesel, and it's just beautiful. So this, you got it's on a Mecham auction, you said, huh? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll just continue the tour here, and uh, I don't know if I can sneak your way, Troy. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, back to the green paint, but uh, but uh, John Deere D here. Randy, what can you tell us about uh, this beautiful rig? Well, this would be one of the later model Ds. Up there by the water, little boy, we have an early D. Okay. And so it's kind of fun to see the early stuff and then how it was transformed into a tractor like this with lights and direct electric. And uh, well, I guess it's probably not any more comfortable than it was back in the 20s. Yeah. But uh, refined, uh, Dreyfus steel, uh, just a beautiful, smooth tractor. Hmm. That's fun to look at for sure. And next to, is it, is it the experimental next to it? Yeah, this would be uh, one of those experimental Ds. Okay. Uh, it's not a, a, a bean D, but uh, it's got some experimental parts on it. Hmm. Uh, it's got uh, an experimental carburetor and uh, exhaust manifold. And then it's got one of the uh, handful of uh, John Deere mags. John Deere mag. There you go, folks. And so they call this a very rare one. It's perfect. And it came from the uh, Wolf Collection in Montana. Oh, the famous auction out there a number of years ago, right? You bet. And your your folks went out to that sale? They did. They did. We were all busy. And Dad loved to go do those types of things. And wow. Dad headed out there. 
and uh, Dad did love going to the auctions over the years. Oh, he loved. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dad did. He sure did. Brad, but uh, they got out there and we developed a plan and uh, he bought some tractors. An experimental D here, folks. Not something you see every day. And back on the tag, Troy, went before we we looped around quick, there's you see the X on there. There's an X on it. Yeah. The X leaves the number. Yeah. Very, very cool. And a little, uh, what, we got a 420 high crop here? We do. Yeah. Where'd this baby come from? Uh, this was another Meekum auction. Uh, boy, there could be some fine stuff at those auctions. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those tractors we felt was going too cheap. Yeah. And it needed to come to Kevin Cell Farms. Well, there you go. Hey, that's a machine repeat uh, rule you're following there, Randy. If, if something's going a little light, uh, be ready to take advantage. What we got here, Brad? This is another cutout motor, and over against the wall, there is a cutout transmission. Huh. And where did this come from? Do you guys remember? This one came from Des Moines. Hmm. Um, I had a couple people tell me that they saw it for sale, and I called the gentleman, and uh, I drove directly out and brought her right home. It's one, another one of those items like the little cat pedal tractor that just has to come home with you, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, you, don't, you don't see these. They yeah. don't come across. Yeah. And uh, I missed this the first time, but I love these little Maytags. I, mean, I covered an auction one time on the border of El Paso in and, and Mexico, and it was the only auction I've ever seen they've done in three languages, English, Spanish, and German, because wow. it was a Mennonite community, and they had about 20 of these things. But uh, we'll step back in time there, folks. We've got a real old one on the other wall. It's got an ice cream machine and everything, and it had a gas motor that ran it. An ice cream machine? You can nice. see it on the other oh, wall. Oh, man. This one here, a lot of people have tried to buy it. It's brand new. It was on the show floor of a friend of ours. So never used? In town, in town. Never used? I don't think so. Wow, right off the showroom floor. Right off the showroom floor. That's why it's here. Uh, he passed away and his uh, uh, wife wanted us to have it. Well, that is cool. I love how you're honoring it, the history on it. and Boy, again, folks, we just keep going here. Now, look, look at this uh wagon we were uh talking about this one a little bit randy when we did our first pass here and uh the condition of the of this wagon is is amazing it's getting hard to find it when you got the patina and you can see the paint and so on yep uh and the stenciling the machinery back in the day the wooden machinery was beautiful yep. uh, they say that the artists kind of painted it the way they wanted that day uh kind of finding a formula hmm. But uh, we've never washed this. We're real careful. We don't want to lose the color right. of the striping. Right. But you can also see where it came from. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting. Maybe the family that had this will uh, give you a call and say, hey. There you go. Papa, Illinois, C.A. Boyle. Yeah, folks, drop a comment under the, into the comment section here if you have a connection to Papa or you know that C.A. Boyle name or family. Uh, that's fantastic. And we have, uh, ooh, I'll just raise up more tractors. We need to keep going here, Andy, don't we? We got, we sure we got more good ones. I'll follow you. All righty. That's up here, Brad. Oh, the transmission. Oh, the cutaway? Yeah, another cutaway piece. Okay. Oh, there we go. Sure. This one could be plugged in and actually run. Uh, same demo uh, stuff. Uh, Brad found this too, and we just brought it home. Where did you find it, Brad? Um, this one here I found in Iowa. I don't remember the name of the place anymore. Not something you run across? No. Hardly ever. No. <laughs> See, cool. if it wasn't here now, it would never be here. That is awesome. You know, it's one of those pieces. You're there's right, no. there's times when you just got hey, to gotta bring you got to bring it home, right? And there's probably some pretty rare parts on that, too. I would think so. Have you ever, guys ever had deer dealers through here to look at that? No. Older deer dealers? I don't think so. No. I don't so. Older uh, parts guys, they might, uh, well, uh, and that's why we do these videos, folks. Um, and I was teasing the guys. We came to film Tractor Tales, and uh, the guys are super busy. It's spring of the year, and I'm like, guys, if you please have time, we need to do a little walk and talk because he has so much Good pieces, you know, things like that that you just don't get to see. And uh, thank you guys again for showing us. It's got a zero hour tack on it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That adds value. Now, speaking of low hours, is this a, was it 2010 here? 
2010 with seven original hours on it. Seven hours, Troy? What the heck? Seven. What's what's the scoop on it? Well, I guess, I don't, I'm just thinking the fellow, the original owner, parked it. And uh, it, this also came out of the Wolf Collection. Oh, the Montana and, sale, uh, right. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's Unfound to find something like this, but this is what this is what, what a John Deere. This is what it is. The, the, the story that we had heard, and Dad heard it when he bought it up there from some of the neighborhood, was that the son-in-law put those hours on the tractor. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Wolf wasn't too happy. Uh, he kind of <laughs> bought it to keep it on uh, brand new, huh? For some reason, or another, but he had hundreds of tractors. Yeah. Well, you can't be too disappointed if it's got seven hours on it. But uh, no, there you go. Seven. Yeah, a 2010. One, right? <laughs> I will tell you, machine repeat. I have no comparables on that. A seven-hour 2010. That is awesome, fantastic, and uh, beautiful 3020 behind us here. Uh, uh, yes, 3020 standard. It's just a gorgeous. It is gorgeous. Beautiful. And so, Randy, you're. Uh, what attracts you to to add to your collection not necessarily driven by a particular model series it's just certain tractors grab you guys or you know, that's a good question you know this is another tractor that uh just needed a home i don't think it was bringing enough money and uh, whoever restored it i mean it's just immaculate beautiful and uh our problem is we just plain like tractors <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good I problem. I never met one I didn't like. Yeah. Well, so this came home, and, and it's just a gorgeous tractor. It is. And it's in here. It looks good in here, too. That's fantastic. All right, Troy, what do we got next? Oh, we got two different odds and ends back here. We got a row of orchards, a 3020, a 620, and a 2020. A row of orchards. A row of orchards. Man, are these things sweet. 2020? Yeah. And then you said... Thir uh, a 3020? 2020 and a 620. 620, yeah. okay. You know, the, the orchard tractors, you just gotta love how they look. Yeah. I mean, they're just, you know, they're works of art. They grab you, they're don't they? fun to look at, you know, it makes you wanna get in there and drive on it. Yeah. So, look at them with the lights on them. Yeah. If there's one What's that, that we didn't have, it would be an AOS. I wish we had one of those. Ah. We've got a B that's not done up in another shop that, uh, that we're working on. Oh, you guys, you, uh, do you generally have a, a tractor or two that you're kind of working on restoring or a little bit sometimes we do sometimes we don't um in the past we we did more of it in the past than we do yeah. now okay yeah. when he's orchard it's interesting where they put the lights they're all way down low yep. lower than the tires yeah it's uh it's you know, i've always found these orchards just to be fascinating because uh you know growing up in west central minnesota where i did you just didn't didn't see them so to hear the stories on them and were these uh local collector auctions do you remember randy where you acquired them or uh troy do you remember where this came from i don't um uh, so the 3020 and the 2020 came out of the same auction okay and i don't recall uh, where those came okay out of. these are these 20 all three of these are real hard to find especially when they're this excellent <coughs> yeah <coughs> But this German, this German 2020, they're pretty, pretty hard to find. Yeah, and it's just, it'd be so beautiful. We get attracted to the rarity of them. Look for the something unusual about them. Yes. Like a seven-hour 2010. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or a cutaway 4010. Awesome. And a uh, beautiful 4030 here. Was this another one, Randy, that just uh, seemed like it needed to come home with you? Absolutely. Uh, it was done by the same fellow that did the... Uh, 430V up there and a 330LP. Okay. And this just had to go with the set because it was beautiful and it just wasn't bringing what it should. So yeah. here it is. I, I like the way you think, Randy. I machine repeat <laughs> approval on that big time. All right. Sometimes I think my brothers wished I wasn't with them when we were Oh, there you go. Practice. You got the meek and soul right there. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute now. You said your brother. You, you think Randy, he brings too many home, would you say, Brad, or not? <laughs> Troy is smiling. <laughs> we gotta throw water on it. Right? Yeah, it's it's all good. All good. Okay, what do we got here? Beautiful 730? Yeah. 830 behind it? Yep. Yep. Wow. Classic. John Deere muscle folks. There you go. All of those 830s are fun. The old front tires just kind of bounce and shake. 
And that really had to be a thrill to do field work in one yeah. of those. Isn't it amazing, to, you know, that monster of its day, right? Oh, my goodness. And now up in the shed, what do you guys farm with? You I mean you get the, uh, we're talking to Troy, uh, actually, you're trying to sell, uh, folks, if you're looking for a beautiful uh, 620 quad track, uh, Troy here has one for sale. Is it a 21 model? 21 model. How many hours? 400. 400 hours. Yep. All right, we'll try to get a picture from Troy if you're looking for that. Hard to find those. Uh, that one hours. A PTO. Nice, nice. So with all this green, you're not opposed to doing a little red then, Troy? Not really, you know, we, yeah. we like red. Red's been good to us over yep. the years, yep. and uh, yeah. No Did problem. I hear, Brad, were you telling me that the first combine you guys had was a Gleaner N6? Correct. Okay, so you guys, have, yeah, you've, you've sampled a, a wide palette here. That's good, yes. awesome. But we'll go up the steps here, folks. And again, uh, just keeps getting better. We see some, you know, just John Deere history every turn here. I didn't even notice you had a little petrol tractor in here. Oh, you might have one of those. And it's got the original trailer. The original trailer. Perfect. It would have been a long afternoon riding this one. Oh, man. No kidding. Now, the air conditioning. <laughs> Mother Nature. Did this come out of the Montana sale as well? No, this is actually came out of the area. Uh, Mr. Bundelay, uh, Orville Bundelay, mm. we bought, uh, bought some machinery and tractors from him. Uh, we bought his whole collection one time. That's beautiful and, condition. Uh, that was a real big start to our first two or three tractors. Okay. When Orville called us and said, hey guys, I've uh, got some I would like to sell. Mm. And the Gilpeen plow over here, that's from his collection too. I should get a better shot of that for people who want to see it. I guess when you got tired of walking behind one, if you had the money, now you could ride. And plow. <laughs> Again, advancements as we go. And you can only imagine the advancement that had to be. Yeah, no kidding. See, I love this, this triangle right here. We've got, you know, the plow, we've got the John Deere sleds, and then we got the 4020 cutaway right behind us here. This is what I mean. This is the fun of uh, getting a look at the Bader family collection here. Just, just this amazing. This when we were kids. You've never seen a little orchard sprayer. Orchard sprayer. I'm okay. Well, this is, goes back to the story of uh, our grandfather with the clamshell yep. 110. Yep. Is uh, when he went to work for the dealership, he bought this for our father. Okay. And gave this to our father as a gift huh. uh, before he uh, was okay. killed. Wow. And it's all original except the engine. We wore the original engine off. I should find. The engine that went with this 1963 mm. sprayer. Wow. Isn't that in good shape? It is. And what? Uh, yeah, I just just don't I don't run across those. Very cool. I love how you guys kept it and again the family connection to it. Well, when we were a done lot of times, with it, like, when we were done with it, it always got washed. Yep. We were younger then, but I always remember being on the tractor that pulled this when Dad would go ahead and spray our orchards. Okay. And I got washed. <laughs> <laughs> Pull it on the back side of it. It's a good little view on the back of it. Tempt the job to go over, right? Nice. Uh, number five. Wow, I'm going to have to check the machine repeat database for that. I... And, and now back to the hard work. Yep. We've got the original handles. That went with this. <laughs> if you were that guy. If you were that you guy. Get one, it'll go ahead and push it through your yeah. arm. Yeah. Did you ever have to be that guy, Randy? Oh boy, no, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> uh, but you never knew. We all yeah, found it. that's so good. 1963. It was back to like bailing hay. We didn't know any better. Hey, you just you do what you got to do, right? You bet. Wow. Well, let's uh, continue this way a little bit, and folks, let's we'll get over to the Waterloo boy here. We we did a clip on this for Tractor Tales coming up, so be watching for U.S. Farm Report and Machine Repeat for that. But this Waterloo boy. Uh, Randy, you were saying has connections to the to the uh, to, was it the Expo Center or the museum? Uh, back to the Expo Center. Okay. Uh, that's where this tractor was. That's where we viewed it. It was at the Expo Center. It, it was at the pavilion. Oh, the or pavilion. The, pavilion. The collector Center. I'm sorry. The okay. Collector Center the collector there center. on the pavilion. Uh, okay. And yep. they closed the Collector Center down, and I wish they would have. That was so beautiful. Mm. But anyway, the fellow that started the collector center worked for John Deere. Okay. 
he helped us uh, find his friend in Atlanta. Mm. And then we became friends. Yep. But then uh, he told Dad about this Waterloo boy down okay. there. And it's a Kenny Cass, and they say it's one of the best Waterloo boys in the world. It's beautiful. Uh, is what he told us. And, uh, and he's a John Deere expert. So anyway, uh, we went down there to view it, and uh, he told us there was a guy down there from Florida that was going to buy it if we didn't. We had about 15 minutes to make up our mind. And uh, well, he started you're... it for us. Yep. And they just come alive yeah. when you start them. Uh, the little cream jars there, the milk, or the uh, oil is yep. boiling in them. Yep. Yep. One, two, three, back and forth. You can hear the mag snap. And the intake up there, you can hear it suck air. And then bang. And it's one of those tractors that uh, you just stand there and literally amazement to watch them run. Yeah. It's just so beautiful. Over 100 years old, and it, uh, you know, it's how Deer got into the tractor business. And uh, to find one from the Expo Center like that in this condition, uh, again, when you when you guys have people through that must uh, stop them in their tracks. Absolutely. If this was outside, it's a real showstopper. Yeah. Oh, would be, yeah. And uh, the uh, the same gentleman connected you with the uh, with the Lindemann over there? He did. He did. It's all rebuilt. Liniment parts are real hard to find mm. right now. And uh, this one here, you could go drive right out of here and go to work. But it's Ready a to roll. Tractor. Wow. And uh, <clears throat> what do we got here? The 62? Oh, the old 62. They're fun. Which was uh, their very rare tractor. Mm -hmm. They uh, Actually, they were the prototype of the L. Mm. Uh, there wasn't many of them made. I guess a lot of them were scrapped. But uh, this is a, a Mecham tractor. We found it down there with, okay. with those fellas. Okay. And then what's kind of exciting is uh, now they even make a model of it. I was going to say, don't take it out of the box. <laughs> no, I don't They're think They're not going to do will. that. But there you go. Very cool. And it's got the plow on it. And I bet you can't even find a plow like that. Oh, I didn't even notice the plow back there. Did that sell with it, or did you guys find that separate? They sold together. Okay. Well... Randy, this is a amazing walk, and we're not even done yet. But we got a forty thirty here and a forty twenty. Beautiful. Did you want to see that Maytag with the uh, ice cream machine? Yes, I do. <laughs> I do want to see that. Wow. Now, have you have you tried it out? Have you made some ice cream? No, but you know, I think we should. <laughs> If you come back in the summer, we'll make some. There you go. And I guess you take that out, and then you can wash some clothes. <laughs> make some ice cream and, and wash your clothes. It's not in here right now, but there's a beautiful uh, gasoline engine that ran this. Wow. And it's and, just beautiful. Look at so that. That's when I was Look at that, uh, the Maytag logo there. And, the, you know, these items kind of uh, amazing pieces of history. And, again, folks, uh, just a cool variety of stuff here. Uh, from a, Must be from an old John Deere dealership here, huh? It is. Kind and of. it tells the history, 200 years of farm progress like I've never seen before. A lot of the it. things that, that we looked at are actually there. Yeah. That is uh, amazing, Randy. Um, wow. Thank you. Or we'll just walk up to the front and catch the catch brothers here. Uh, so much fun. Thank you guys for uh, your time to give us the walk around and the stories. And uh, wow, I know our viewers are just going to enjoy uh, viewing this for years to come. So again, Bader Brothers Carousel Farms here in Monroe, Wisconsin. Troy, Randy, Brad, thank you guys so much. Uh, this has been uh, about one of the funnest days I, re I remember. Oh, well, thanks. Wow. Well, thank thank you so much. Enjoy your time. Our pleasure. You bet. Thanks. Thanks, Randy. Thanks, Brad. Thank you very much. Troy, Take thanks. Care. And again, watch out on the polling circuit. Do we have any uh, dates we want to float for your comeback there? <laughs> We're not committing. <laughs> All right. Keep your eyes peeled, folks. And uh, again, hey, thanks, guys. Your next piece of equipment is on MachineryPete.com. Search equipment from dealerships across the country to find what you're looking for. Only on MachineryPete.com.